was here first. Just wait till Mom and Dad find out about this. Oh, yeah? You think they'd pick you over me with your track record? You don't know anything about me. What do you think? Did you understand it? There was an idiom in it. Did you hear it? Hello, my name is Dakota, and if you've ever walked out of an English class thinking, hey, I'm beginning to really understand English only to be totally frustrated when you sat down and watched an American movie. You may have understood most of the words being spoken, but you couldn't understand the meaning. Having a clear understanding of English is so important, whether it's being used in school, social situations, or in your professional life. English has become the common world language and regardless of why you're trying to learn it, it is essential that you understand the true meaning of what is being said. To do so, you must understand idioms and phrasal verbs. This is why I'm making these videos. So sit back and relax and let's learn about idioms and phrasal verbs. Okay, let's look at our first phrase. The name of this phrase is, sleep on it. The meaning of this phrase is, to think more about something overnight, and make a decision about it later. An example of this phrase is, After I refused the job transfer, my boss asked me to sleep on it, before making a final decision. The woman is saying that her boss asked her to think about their request overnight, before making a decision. And to summarize, sleep on it, means to wait, at least one night, before making a decision. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. If we win, we can save our program. And you want us to perform? Because I didn't think you were a fan. Why don't you sleep on it? Wait, 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 wait. In this clip, the principal is asking the chipmunks to perform in a competition to save their music department. After hesitating, she tells the chipmunks to sleep on it. The principal is telling the chipmunks to consider her request overnight and then make a decision. And you smell like an elephant's butt? <laughs> an elephant's butt. But he's your boss. Do you have to nail it right this minute? Yep. You're still angry, Homer. Why don't you sleep on it? Forget it, Marge. Mm, please, homie. In this clip, Homer has written an angry letter to his boss and wants to send it immediately. Marge asks Homer to sleep on it before sending the letter. Marge is asking Homer to think about it overnight before sending the letter. You haven't even tried donuts yet! You want to store fat? That is the way to store some fat! You'll be sweating through the winter! Oh, okay. Alright, you, you guys sleep on it. Good idea. I'm gonna check back with you. In this clip, RJ is trying to convince the other animals to go and eat human food. As the other animals walk away, RJ tells them to sleep on it. RJ is telling the other animals to think about it overnight and then make a decision. Great! Now let's look at our second phrase. The name of this phrase is, talk you into, or, talk you out of. The meaning of this phrase is, to persuade someone to do, or not do, something. An example of this phrase is, I'm glad Terence talked me into coming to this little pub. It's a lot of fun. The person is saying that she is glad that Terence persuaded her to come to the pub. And to summarize, talk you into, or, talk you out of, means to convince or persuade someone to do, or not do, something. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. It's time to put my stone on the mountain. Okay. Well, then head on back. Put that stone up there. Why aren't you trying to talk me out of it? In this clip, Moana is talking to her grandmother about how she wants to go out into the open sea. 
Her grandmother simply says, okay. Moana is curious why her grandmother doesn't try to talk her out of it. Moana doesn't know why her grandmother doesn't try to persuade her not to go. It proves you can make up anything and put it on the internet. It's not made up. It's real mermaid fact. Leah's proof. I'm not proof. I'm not a mermaid. Hadley, I came to you guys to talk me out of this craziness, not deeper in. In this clip, Barbie is becoming a mermaid and asks her friends to help stop this from happening. One of her friends, Hadley, is happy about it and encouraging her to be a mermaid. Barbie tells her that she wanted to see her so she could talk her out of being a mermaid. Barbie is saying that she wants Hadley to persuade her not to get involved in mermaid activities. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I can't believe I let you talk me into buying the stupid gumball machine looking ring. It's not a stupid gumball machine looking ring. It's a beautiful ring. No, it's not. In this clip, Chandler is angry with Phoebe because she talked him into buying an ugly engagement ring for Monica. Chandler is angry with Phoebe for persuading him to buy an ugly ring. You once said that everyone has a place in this world. Well, this is your place and you shouldn't have to leave because of something I did. Were they with you? Yes, they, they, they came to London. They came to London? Yes, <laughs> to, to talk me into coming back. Well, they probably didn't talk. It was probably all in my head. In this clip, B asks Jeremy why the rabbits were in London. Jeremy says that they were there to talk him into going back home. Jeremy is saying that the rabbits went to London to persuade him to return home. Fantastic. Let's continue on with our third phrase. The name of this phrase is track record. The meaning of this phrase is all the achievements or failures that someone or something has had in the past. An example of this phrase is, I love Hawaii, but my track record at surfing competitions here is not too good. The man is saying that he has failed to have much success when competing in surfing competitions in Hawaii. And to summarize, track record refers to someone's, or something's, past performance, achievements, or failures. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. I was here first. Just wait till mom and dad find out about this. Oh yeah? You think they'd pick you over me with your track record? You don't know anything about me. In this clip, Tim and the boss baby are arguing about who their parents would choose to keep first. The boss baby tells Tim that based on his track record, they would not choose him. The boss baby is saying that based on Tim's past performances, his parents would not choose him. Hey, did you check out that cute guy by the Monet? Uh, yeah, the one breathing on the Monet? I called security. I think it's best to steer clear of him, given my track record. Ooh, is that for me? Oh, no, 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 it's my starving! In this clip, Beth tells her friends that she saw the man that was breathing on the Monet painting and that she will avoid him, giving her track record. Beth is saying that based on her past experiences with men, she should avoid being near this man. Take a close look at the track record of this company. And you'll see that we have gambled in markets traditionally regarded as non-profit. In this clip, the leader of the company asks Dick to talk about the performance of the company. Dick says that the track record of the company reflects a history of gambling on entities that would be considered non-profit companies. Dick is saying that historically the company has gambled on working with non-profit companies. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube.
We really need your help. Great work. We're now going to discuss our fourth phrase. The name of this phrase is, over the line. The meaning of this phrase is, to behave in a way that is unacceptable. An example of this phrase is, you two have really gone, over the line, this time. I can't believe you would gossip about me, the way you have been doing. The girl is saying that the other two girls did something very bad, in the way and manner that they gossiped. And to summarize, over the line means to exceed the limits of what is considered acceptable or appropriate. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Good morning, Officer Swanson. Oh, hey, Nora. Uh, listen, I... It's okay, Joe. You don't need to explain. I stepped over the line at the bar last night, and I'm sorry. It's not that I don't find you attractive. I do. I just... I'm married. In this clip, Nora admits to Joe that she stepped over the line in the bar the previous evening. Nora is admitting that she behaved in a way that is unacceptable. She was not acting appropriately. Oh, no, I just kissed her. What? That's even worse. <laughs> How is that worse? I don't know, but it's the same. You're right. I have no excuses. I was totally over the line. Over the line? You, 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 you're so far past the line that you can't even see the line. You're in this clip, Chandler admits to Joey that by kissing a girl that Joey was interested in, he went over the line. By saying this, Chandler is admitting that his behavior was completely unacceptable, and he is apologizing. You think you need to make some grand, stupid gesture? You need to be a hero. Well, yeah. Sorry, I did screw it up. You stepped over the line. This was not your decision. My God. This in this clip, Wilson is angry at House for giving him a drug so that he could not deliver his speech. He tells House that he stepped over the line. Wilson is saying that House acted inappropriately. That's terrific. We're now going to look at our fifth phrase. The name of this phrase is, all my eggs in one basket. The meaning of this phrase is, to hope for success by relying on one person or plan of action. An example of this phrase is, I like to bet on two or three horses when I go to the racetrack. I don't like having all my eggs in one basket. The man is saying that he doesn't like betting on one horse at the racetrack because he has less opportunity to win. And to summarize, all my eggs in one basket is to concentrate all efforts or resources in one area. Excellent. Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. Nelson, he couldn't have made a movie by himself. Who helped him? Charm skin. Seymour Skinner never puts all his eggs in one basket. That's why they call me Two Baskets Skinner. What? They do. In this clip, Lisa's film production is being supported by her school principal. However, when Lisa asks Mr. Skinner why he is supporting other film productions as well, he says that he never puts all his eggs in one basket. Mr. Skinner is saying that he wants to win a film award and so he has invested in more than one film producer, so as to give him more opportunities to win. My poor little egg! Never even got a chance to drive me crazy! Oh, why? Why me? <laughs> you fools! Oh, you really think I'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket? <laughs> you have until sunrise to build me my ship if you ever want to see your precious egg again! In this clip, Manny and his friends recover some of the stolen eggs. However, one egg was not found. Clint comes forward and says, Did you really think that I would keep all my eggs in one basket? Clint is saying that he doesn't keep all of his assets in one place just in case they are discovered. Therefore, now Clint still has one egg he can use to motivate Manny to build him a ship. 
down on each floor. Send the other 50 men down to the basement with us. What about McClay? Not a word. I'm getting nothing. Busy sick. The quest chest is probably worse than... This is kind of putting all our eggs in one basket, isn't it? I mean, what if McClain's wrong? Walter, yeah. This is Principal Martinez. Principal Martinez, Inspector Carl. How do you do, Inspector? In this clip, the police are putting all of their men in one location to stop a crime. A detective is worried that they're putting all their eggs in one basket. The man is saying that if the location where all the police are being sent is incorrect, they could be vulnerable to attacks in other locations. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please spread the word by copying the link to this video to Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or any other form of social media that you use. We need our community of English learners to work together to allow us to produce more of this content. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. It is greatly appreciated. You're doing great. Let's look at our sixth phrase. The name of this phrase is, on the job. The meaning of this phrase is, happening while you are working. An example of this phrase is, I manage a lot of seminars, so I always wear a suit when I am on the job. The man is saying that whenever he is working, he always wears a suit. And just to summarize, on the job is when something is done, seen, or happening while working at their job. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. Hey, where's Charlie? How'd he get out of this? Ah, uh, he's at home on disability. Yeah, he got injured on the job and they sent him home with pay. <laughs> It's like a lottery that rewards stupidity. Stupidity, eh? In this clip, when Homer asks where Charlie is, some other men say that he has been sent home with full pay because he was hurt on the job. This means that Charlie was hurt while he was working at his job. Anyway, I got some extra money from the head of the department, and Raj can come work for me. You want me to work with you? for me. <laughs> you're going to have to listen more carefully when you're on the job. <laughs> In this clip, Sheldon tells Raj that he needs to listen more carefully when he's on the job. Sheldon is saying that if Raj starts working for Sheldon, he needs to improve his listening skills while he is working. Shouldn't they be there by now? What's taking them so long? Hey, these guys are professionals. They're the best. Come on, they're not lying down on the job. In this clip, Woody is talking to his friends about the professional soldiers that are helping him. He assures his friends that they are not lying down on the job. He is saying that they're not just relaxing and doing nothing while they are supposed to be working. Okay, we've come to our last phrase. The name of this phrase is, silver lining. The meaning of this phrase is, something good that can be found in a bad situation. An example of this phrase is, I had some bad luck when I started feeling sick yesterday, but there was a silver lining, I was able to avoid going to that boring seminar being held today. The woman is saying that although she started feeling sick last night, the good news was that she didn't have to attend a boring seminar. And just to summarize, silver lining is when you are talking about something good that comes out of a sad or unpleasant situation. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. Bridesmaids dresses remain unused and available to us for free. <laughs> so it seems that cloud of odorless deadly gas had a silver lining after all. Check it out, still in the bags. 
In this clip, Amy is talking about how the release of a deadly gas somehow resulted in the availability of bridesmaid dresses that they will now be able to use for free. She says that the deadly gas has a silver lining. This means that although the gas is bad, it has provided something good for Amy and her friends. <laughs> there is a silver lining in this dark cloud. I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> You're all alone. You're penniless. And you have no prospects. Are we at the silver lining part yet? <laughs> In this clip, Evelyn is talking to her son, Alan, about how bad his life is. She says that there still is a silver lining to his situation. Evelyn is saying that although everything in his life is going badly, the good thing is that things couldn't possibly get any worse. Therefore, his life must get better in the future. Give information about my friends. Well, like you said, there's no friends on Wall Street, right? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. There's a silver lining to that, too, honey, because they said eventually, eventually everyone's going to have to give information on this case. So in this clip, Jordan is talking to his wife about having to tell the legal authorities about all the bad things that he and his friends have done. However, he says that there is a silver lining. He says the silver lining is that everyone will eventually have to talk about what they did wrong anyway, so maybe he will not need to be disloyal to them. Congratulations, you've completed the video. I hope that you will now understand these phrases when you hear them in the future.